Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the studio. Uh, tonight we got a couple of channel updates, studio updates. Uh, this one here is going to be Joseph's mini truck. We're going to try to get that one done for mini nats. Uh, we were hoping to have it done for the show this weekend on the 30th, but we started a little bit behind. Um, he's already changed the wheels out and I've got the body, so now he's got to make it fit. So be looking for another video of mini truck stuff. Uh, if you hadn't watched the Midnight Plunkin video, uh, the paint video will be coming soon. Um, again, I'm not pre-recording a lot of these videos. So I'm kind of doing it live or sort of live, like just a few days. So uh, it's hard for me to get a lot of progress done without uh, actually doing it uh, basically live. So I will be taking out to work this week. We'll be getting the first color on it. <clears throat> there will be metal flakes involved. So uh, I'll record some of that. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh... The Pro Cat. This was donated by one of our viewers and subscribers and members. Uh, Chris Dotson donated this to the channel for a build. And uh, I think we're going to race it. Um, there is a vintage race coming up in Virginia in a few months. There's one coming up in Florida next or in May. But uh, we're not going to make that one, I guess. But anyway, uh, they do offer a lot of hop-ups for this car already, even though it's vintage. Uh, they offer a more performance transmission it's uh, basically got a slipper clutch and it's a little bit more durable for modern horsepower uh, they recommend 17.5 uh, they have tested with 13.5 with the stock transmission with no major issues and if we race four wheel drive it's probably going to be 13.5 so uh not sure we'll get the transmission for it or not uh but it might be a good idea to do it just in case uh, we we're about a year behind on this thing it came out about a year ago there's several videos on the build um, as they say in England, so it's got some fiddly bits in it. It's a little bit difficult to build, uh, as are all these, uh, vintage Schumachers from what I understand. They get a little, little quirks about them, but I think we can figure it out. No problem. And, uh, yeah, we're going to race on Wednesday night. So let's we'll get this thing ready. Uh, we're going to mount this body up. We got to change the body post and we got some new wheels and tires, maybe a little more traction. So, uh, let's get the cracking on this and... See how we go. All right, first things first, we got to change these rear body posts. Um, like I said, the, this body is a little bit lower profile than the stock car body. The uh, the rear body posts are going to come through the back glass of the stock car style body versus this one coming out on the deck lid. Uh, the last time we raced this, the servo just out of nowhere died. Um, I don't know if it was the frame rate. I read somewhere that frame rates could possibly damage a servo, but uh, maybe not. And then upon inspection, I did see a wire that looked like it was pinched. Uh, instead of trying to get this servo under warranty, I just took it apart and tried to uh, diagnose it myself. And the wire was not uh, damaged. It simply just stopped working. So for whatever reason, it stopped working and we replaced it with the same exact servo. It's an EcoPower uh, low profile. So uh, we're going to try it again. I've had an Eco Power in my sand car. I never had an issue. And uh, I guess with anything, sometimes they just randomly don't want to work. So I don't know why it quit, but uh, it did. But it works now. Uh, we had to buy this to get body post. Uh, that's one downside of Tamiya stuff is uh, you get parts trees. Uh, we need to do bo two body posts, and we got all new control arms and bumpers and upper links and shock bottoms and pivot balls, all kinds of stuff. But uh, out of this whole package, there's two body posts in here we need to get, and all we're going to do is uh, add it to the rear and get that link. So uh, let's dig in and see where they're at. Hopefully they're in here. I think this is right here. These cars come with excessively long body posts. And... Unless you want to leave it crazy long, you cut them down, then they're too short for your next body. So, that one right there is what we need. There's one on each tree. So, uh, we'll pop those off and then uh, get them on the car. Uh, we're going to simply change these out. Then we'll decide uh, how high they need to be. And, uh, of course, we'll have to cut these off too because I don't want them sticking out of the roof. And Because uh, if it was to turn over and that is a carpet track, they probably wouldn't uh, be too happy with you with the body post digging in the carpet. So let's get these uh, mounted up 
and uh, get this cutting. All right, we're gonna we got these removed. We'll keep these with the body. That way, if we ever want to switch back to this body or a body similar to it that has a low slung uh, trunk lid area and or maybe a truck body uh, might fit. Because I've got a truck body over here that will fit this car. So uh, maybe I should have tried that before I took these off, but it's not painted yet. Uh, let's see how far we got to go here. The front is good. And the back needs to go approximately right there. So we're going to guesstimate. See how that goes. See how good my eagle eye is tonight. Pretty good. Pretty good shot right there. Let me get the front back on. Yeah. It looks pretty uh, equal on each end. Maybe the front, eh, maybe go one more hole in the back. A little bit low in the back. We don't want to go squatting. We are in North Carolina, but we're not about to squat here in the GW. Yeah, it looks a little race car-y. Slightly raked in the rear. And uh, let me uh, count them holes and we'll throw the other pin in. And then we can uh, cut a couple of these off the top because that is way excessive. All right, we got it where we want it, and uh, we're just going to simply take our Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel and be real careful. I mean, you could do this and mark it with a marker and not risk hitting your body, but uh, we're going to take a chance here. No harm, no foul. I may clean that one last hole off just to get it below the roof line, just in case, worst case scenario, it does grab carpet. And uh, I'll do, I will take the body off of that when we get too close to the body, so... Um, yeah, I like it. I'm not ruling out the aero disc. They might bolt up to these other wheels. All right, we got the uh, sweep. I don't know all the numbers. Um, I know the shore rating definitely is temperature related. Um, I'm probably totally... Uh, off on this but they're 24 degree tires so uh, i don't know if that's hot weather cold weather all i know is they feel sticky compared to what i had for reason, for some reason i thought i ran 42 or 40 something on pavement and i think they were a little soft for pavement uh, we raced in a tennis court a few years ago um, with uh, traxxas vortex and i ran the same brand and sweep tires Yeah, these feel so much better already. Still not full of foam like you would. I'm normal. I'm used to like pan car tires being uh, cap tires being solid. There is a little air gap in there. Maybe that'll ha uh, help with the uh, side traction. So looks like they're glued really nice. No glue all over the wheels. So uh, should be just a uh, pretty much just bolt on. Make sure we didn't lose our drive pins. We're about to lose one over here. That might be one upgrade. I might get the captured uh, hexes for this thing eventually. So we don't have to deal with dropping uh, drive pins every time you take a wheel off. Uh, I have to build a trophy for the show this weekend. And uh, you might see some of that too. Now it looks like a race car. Check it out. Um... I'm going to put this other one and see if a turbo disc will fit on it. Aero disc, whatever you want to call them. Look at that. They do fit. I think this thing's actually protected me when I was hitting the wall. Because you can tell they were hitting the wall pretty good. We might run them. They stick out a little bit more. They might look a little silly. Eh, we're not going for style points this week. We're going for performance. Um, well, sort of. We're trying to do better. Uh, we will be racing Oval uh, next Saturday during the show, the truck show, car show. Um, we're going to try to do double duty and uh, race the same day that the show is. So be on the lookout for that video. And if you hadn't subscribed, uh, check that out if you like watch uh, Oval racing and or car shows because it's going to be a combo. 
Yeah, that looks like a race car. And it's pretty slam too. Almost wheel dots. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try the old Beretta Lumina, whatever you want to call it. It's actually molded after a Beretta. I don't think NASCAR ever ran a Beretta. They may have tried it in like the uh, Bush series or maybe even the, the Dash series. I'm not sure. I know they ran Cavaliers and Pontiac Sunfires in the Dash series. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we might go through these shocks before Saturday or uh, Wednesday because this one is got air in it since day one. Kind of need to rebuild the rear shocks. Front shocks feel fine. That right rear feels the worst. Yeah, we're going to pop the shocks off. We'll go through the rear shocks and... Uh, that probably be pretty much it for our race prep. Uh, we're not cleaning the motor. We're not doing anything special there. All right, guys. I feel like an idiot. Uh, I did not record building the shocks, um, but I really didn't rebuild them. I just drained the oil, and uh, I couldn't remember if I put what oil I put in when I built it. I'd actually have to go back and watch the video of where I built this car. Um, I'm assuming I put 30 in it, and. Uh, we went up to 40 in the rear to help with some of the understeer. The car was pushing pretty bad, so we're hopefully it'll loosen the rear end up a little bit. But uh, it's going to be hard to tell because we're changing tires, body. Um, so the shocks did have air in them from the very beginning. Had a little bit of squishy sound, so we did fix that problem. No more squishy sounds, and we got the air out, and we put 40 in the rear. Didn't change the springs. Uh, so simply going with the oil change, body, and these uh, more grippy tires. And uh, hopefully we'll be good to go. Uh, this is Joseph's mini truck uh, build. Uh, we're going to crank this thing open. See what he's done. He has changed the wheels. Um, I don't know if the body's in there or not. But I do have the body that we're going to put on it. So uh, seeing how we're cutting this a little bit short tonight. Because uh, really I didn't need to dig into this car any more than what I did. Changing post, shock oil. Uh, so no big deal. Um, yeah, let's uh let's crack into that thing and uh, see what the body's gonna look like on there. There's the stock wires. He done took them off. Uh, this is all the stuff that I told him to buy to do the conversion because uh, we're doing a truck bed. We're gonna eliminate the rear shocks and we're gonna run these ball ends. If you wanna watch uh, how to do that, I do have it on my build video of my truck. Uh, mine was the first one. Chris's blazer was second. The blazer didn't require this because simply because of the roof height. Uh, the bed being flat, we had to eliminate the shocks because the rear servo horns on the rear suspension have to be level with the bed. Uh, so we got links. We got steering linkage. We're going to swap, swap out the steering linkage with titanium. Again, I go over that in my video, my build video. The inch and a half titanium turnbuckles. Um... Love it or hate it, we got black wheels. Uh, we may or may not use these. Red Cat does provide you with a wall charger or a USB charger, which uh, rarely gets used, I imagine. And I'm assuming you can put rechargeable batteries in ready. I need to read the instructions because there is a charge port for your transmitter. Those are other ball ends for the other side if we do the rear. Well, we're going to do the rear. We'll have to. Here's all the randomness they send you. A bunch of body posts, uh, magnet mounts. Uh, no magnets, but they send you the mounts for them, the pads. And that's what we ended up using on the blazer, but with Velcro. You get your sweet owner's manual. It'd be cool if this was like a lowrider magazine, but it's basically a book. But it shows you all the functions and the tricks and how to set your radio up, set and gear mesh, um, how the radio, I guess there's several different languages. Uh, functionality here. Yeah, it's basically just all different languages. It's the same thing on repeat. So we got his transmitter. Oh, he took the car cover off, so no big reveal. We built uh, two of them out of green Monte Carlos, and we said, why not? Let's get a blue one. They had a blue one and a uh, green and a purple in stock. And uh, like I said, he then pulled the wires off. 
Uh, he didn't modify the steering like I did on mine. He sp simply spaced it out so it wouldn't rub. So his steering is all 100% stock. Um, the body that I'm going to put on this is pretty wide, so that might be okay. It might be a fine. Uh, mine, I had to narrow it and I had to suck the wheels in as far as possible. Because the uh, body I'm running is 190 millimeters. And the Ranger that we're going to put on here is a little bit wider. So it's probably about the same width as this car. So we should be good without any... Uh, modifying of the steering linkage his is still all stock and not rubbing so uh, that's a good thing uh, worst case scenario we got all the parts to fix it for the ranger these magnets are crazy strong there's your basic rig cat setup no modification whatsoever uh, only thing done was the wheels uh, we will probably have to lose this but uh Hang on just a minute and let me uh, grab that body and we'll see. All right, I don't know if I revealed these in another video. I think I did with a members only video, but I did get two bodies from Cibulatech. Uh This is the S10 body, extended cab. I'm not a big fan of the flare side bed and it's a little bit short. His body was originally designed for like a fan car, but uh, beggars can't be choosy when it comes to truck bodies. There's not a lot of them out there and uh, it's not a bad looking body. It's just a little out of proportion. So. We're going to set this one on there just out of uh, curiosity. We're not going to use it on this car. I might end up putting this body on my TTO2 for a, to make a race truck out of it. So get that up off the ground. Yeah, you'll have to lose the bumper. Just like on mine, you'll have to lose the bumper and the rear tail section. I'm going to pull these bumpers off right quick before we put the, the Ranger body on. All right, we got the bumpers pulled off. Microphone still on. Uh, just unbolted it, so no modifications yet. Just unbolted the deck lid or the trunk fuel cell area. It's got the metal plates. The magnets are in the body, and the magnets in that body are pretty stout. So we're going to start with the S10 body and just double check clearances. Now that the bumper is removed. Oh, yeah. Now. To get the body down where we need it, we will have to push the servos down. And uh, we'll absolutely have to do the shock removal in the rear to get the body to lay flat. We want the bed of the body to lay on the servos. This body might be just a, no, eh, maybe just a tick short on wheelbase. But uh, not too bad. I think if we lose the front bumper, we gotta, we're got we going to have to cut some of that off, just like on the other truck. And uh, I'm just look, glancing at the Ranger body, and most likely it's going to have to go. So uh, Let's uh, prove that theory and set the Ranger on here, the body that we're actually going to run. Again, it's the Bulatec, square body Ranger. This is... Uh, I don't know what they call it on their site because they do uh, change the names to avoid uh, copyright problems and or licensing problems. I think it's called the Danger, maybe. Uh, but it is a bow link Ford Ranger. I've done one of these in the past. It's a pretty decent looking body. Again, not perfect uh, symmetrical stuff on it, but uh, not bad at all. And without a doubt, that bumper's got to go. It's not even going to fit with that bumper on there. So uh, let's uh, break out the old Dremel tool and go ahead and lose the bumper because we're going to have to lose it anyways. Just like on mine, I cut mine too far. I cut all these holes out. I probably could have left them because uh, on the Blazer, if you watched the Blazer video, I ended up using these holes here. So we're going to just lose the front bumper mount area. And uh, the front bumper and the grill is going to be basically right up against the servos. Not a race car, so it's not going to be a problem hitting anything, I wouldn't think. And plus, they're not fast either, so. All right, Joseph. It ain't new no more. Getting ready to cut it up. $350. Not too shabby. We may go back and clean that up just a little bit. But, uh, clearance is clearance. There we go. Chop, chop. Now, Danger Ranger time.
Well, I'm not happy. This body's a little short. Um, you seen it here first. The Ranger body is short. And the Monte Carlo is the shortest of the trucks. Or the cars, anyways. The lowriders. Shortest wheelbase. And for order this to work, we're going to have to shorten this thing another quarter inch. And I don't think I want to get into chopping the car up. So, we got to come up with a plan C. Because plan A and plan B, as can be and B, may not be an option. What are we going to do? Although, the S10 don't fit too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it for him. He might be an S10 man this time. This kind of sort of looks like his Durango. His Durango's extended cab. Or his Dakota. Why am I saying Durango? His Dakota is... Uh, I'll post a picture here. His Dakota is an extended cab. So we might build a the Dakota a little bit. It's got similar maybe sort of body lines it's a rounded off truck but the square ranger is so cool but uh i hate it it's just too short i can fix that we can cut a quarter inch out of the chassis and put it back together but uh, i don't think we want to go to those lengths uh just for this build dang I'm glad I had the body. I'm glad I wasn't waiting for it to see if it would fit because uh, it would suck that ordered one and uh, hoping it would fit and knowing, now knowing, it no fit. And the only way to make it fit is going to be to, uh, I don't know if we can shorten the link bars. Maybe. No. If we do, we'll have to cut the end of the frame rails off. That's our only option that will shorten the wheelbase is to um, shorten all the links. That's not undoable. Simply shorten these links by a quarter inch, each one of them. And uh, there's enough play in the drive shaft that would make up the difference because it just gets longer as it comes down and when it's all the way up. You still got an eighth of an inch. We're not going to ride that high, so that's not ever going to be a problem. Well, that's about it for mocking up Joseph's truck tonight. Uh, we will, uh, I'll talk to him tomorrow at work and see what he wants to do. If we want to shorten these links uh, or make just get some threaded rod and uh, make them a quarter inch shorter, or if he's happy with an S10 body. We're going to call that a wrap for part A of the video tonight and part B because part A was uh, getting the race car ready. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot to get it ready. Uh, totally forgot. I hit, I hit stop instead of record. I recorded me wiping the body off. I didn't record me building the shots. I did the opposite. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, segment of the video. Uh, hang tight. May throw in a little bit of this at the shop, the, the lunchbox, and or the trophy building, because we got to get on that tomorrow after work at night. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you at the shop. Hang on a minute. All right, guys, like I said, uh, this video is going to be a little bit all over the place. Uh, we're going to get our first coat of paint on the lunchbox. I uh, filled up the antenna hole, put a little bit of glaze in it, just a little spot primer would be all right. Uh, we're going to seal this in black black base on it and then we are going to uh, flake it out with silver flakes Paint is pretty hot for a hard body or even styrene. 
uh, without some kind of barrier. I did put sealer on it, but uh, probably would have been best if I put some primer, like a 2K primer, to protect the plastic. But uh, in our defense, uh, we're going to flake this thing so much that you're not going to really see any imperfections. much of this plate, but I plate the whole thing just to make sure we got the plates where we need it. Um, as for the trophy, it's almost done. We're going to candy this part. I'm not going to say the G word, but the paint sprayer. Uh, I'm not going to say the G word on YouTube. Um, we're going to make a trophy out of this. I'm going to make a little small detail of the best paint award on the cup, and then we'll make a platform. We're not sure what we're going to use for a platform yet. And uh, as usual, we're running behind. Uh, it's uh, Wednesday, and now we got to get this thing done by Saturday morning. So and if you're around the Mississippi area, car show, uh, Turner Burn Speedway, we will be racing indoors and a car show in the parking lot. So come check it out. Uh, either way, racing or a car show. And uh, yeah, subscribe, please do. And uh, we'll see you Sunday. Thanks. <laughs>